Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with some news that I have to admit, a little out of date. This actually came out while I was on vacation, but it's still relevant to the future and very relevant about Blender. Uh, now, what we've got now is a discussion of Blender's future, kind of a twofold thing. First is a discussion of how Blender is going to happen outwards towards 2025. Also, some what you can expect in the near tomb future from the Blender team. So we're going to do both of those in these videos together, along with a small bit of sad news at the end as well. So first off, we're going to get into the new announcement that was made while I was gone. And this is the announcement of Blender long-term support and 3.0 and beyond. Now, Blender are finally fixing one of those things. I don't know. Blender's always kind of done things to be Blender-y. I've always got this impression that a couple of the things that they've done, they did it because that's the way they did it and for no other real reason. And their numbering scheme is one of those things. And that is actually going to be changing in this upcoming cycle. Another thing that they're doing is offering LTS versions. Now, if you're not familiar with this, LTS is uh, the term for long-term support. And this is normally found in corporate software. If you look at, uh, for example, Windows 7, there's a big controversy on it because it is about to drop off of long-term support. Now for you and I, people that traditionally download the, you know, the beta versions and ignore the do not run in a production environment warning, LTS isn't a big deal. But if you work in a corporate setting or if you are, um, you know, working on a movie pipeline that is going to take three to four years for your project to finally finish, well, long-term support does suddenly get a lot more important. And that's what we've got here is Blender is now doing, uh, first proposal is to do one LTS or long-term support release every year. Release would be supported for two years with important bug fixes and updates for new hardware. So what basically this means is a previous version of Unity, uh, sorry, of Unity, of Blender will continue to get product update. So if a bug comes, a device driver problem, those kind of things, no new features, but they get security updates and um, bug fixes and that kind of stuff. That's what LTS is all about. So they're going to do uh, one long-term support every year. A uh, good reason to do LTS now is to focus on fixes and patches of the past months. The next release, 2.83, although big, will be relatively less experimental. That's a good candidate to keep supporting for a while. LTS versions uh, also will help to ensure that a project that started with an LTS version can complete it, can be completed with the same version in a reasonable amount of time. Whereas if you're kind of working on a long-term project, sometimes that mid-cycle upgrade can be a nightmare. You'll see this actually in game development a lot. There's a lot of game developers that are using you know, Visual Studio 2015 or, or earlier because that's what they started with and every new version kind of breaks the code. Well, that's no different with... Um you know, 3D content, each new project format, or could just implement little bugs that just make your pipeline hell. So you might be stuck on a long-term support version. A surprising amount of requests for LTS agreements come from corporations who have more strict install procedures internally. For various reasons, they do not want individual employees to download our releases and uh, official LTS uh, with controlled install would fit the procedures much better. We will further investigate this topic in the coming period. And you know, that actually totally makes sense, especially as we start looking at people like uh, Ubisoft adopting this for work in their animation platform and, and various other corporations coming on board. You know, if you want to play with the big boys, you kind of also got to offer support like the big dog. And that's not normally something that you would see in the open source world. Uh, and the other thing that they're doing here, and thank goodness for this one, is they are changing their release number. I propose to accelerate a bit of our release numbers this decade. This summer, we will blunder 2.90 with new particle nodes. We'll get into a little bit about what's coming new version wise in a minute. Uh, summer 2021, Blender 3 series officially begins by then we will implement a more conventional aka normal uh release numbering um so they're gonna see you know we're gonna have blender 3.1 then 3.2 then 3.3 then 3.7 and so on uh suggest doing minor uh releases for two-year periods then move to a new major release blender 4.0 could be there for uh, in 2023 already so we got a bit of an outline so we're going to see the 2.8 and 2.9 wrap up uh, so 2.82 was released in February 2.83 the first theoretical two year supported LTS version is going to ship in May and then August we'll see 2.9 um, November 2.91 February uh, 2.92 and then the next LTS version which again will be supported for two years for those environments will come in May of 2021 at which point we jump over to three so in August 2021 Blender 3 will be released and at that point in time no more of this 3.09 followed by 310 stuff it's gonna go 3.1 3.2 3.3 that'll be LTS 3.4 3.5 3.6 3.7 again LTS and then we're gonna flip over to 4.0 again and this is kind of not written in stone or anything, but then you're going to see a much more conventional numbering system going on. And then once again, the intermixed long-term support versions all throughout. Uh, 
uh, you know what? It's all changes. For a lot of us, it's not going to affect us. Again, if you're the type of person that downloads it directly off Blender.org, you're not going to care about long-term support for the most part. But if you're a company trying to commit to a technology and you need some stability in your life, LTS versions is actually a pretty big deal. And this numbering thing, it's just one of those things that I've always found, you know, again, they're just being a little contrarian. I know other projects do it as well, but the majority, the vast majority don't. So it's nice to see them kind of standardizing on a number system that is intuitive to people. Obviously, opinions are going to differ on this one. Let me know what you think of the old versus the new. If this is like them finally coming around to the rough the world like they did with left click select, or if this is just a thing. Let me know what your opinion is. Comments down below. All right, so now we're going to get into a little bit more of the short term future of Blender stuff. And here we've got um, their immediate 10 biggest projects coming for 2020. So we got library overrides to replace animation proxy system and support local changes from linked data. Uh, we get more details. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail on each one of these. I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you want to get it and grab more details, uh, we've also got multi res support for non destructive sculpting in multiple levels of detail for skin characters, preserving a base mesh for baking and animation. That'll definitely be nice. So you can, um, your base mesh will allow you to do a lower polygon textured version for, again, for baking and so on, but you can get the higher level details and so on out of it. Uh, particle nodes, as they were mentioning in the last version, this is the 2.90 feature, uh, implement a stable, reliable, and flexible node-based particle system. A big part of the future of uh, Blender is the design ethos of everything is a node, so it's going to be interesting to see how that actually happens. Uh, volume object type, volume needs their own native data block type, so Blender can support other use cases like rendering open VDB files procedurally generated volumes. Uh, hair object type, a node and modifier based hair object to replace the existing system. No new functionalities at first. Uh, then we got a faster animation playback. Animators should be able to work in an interactive and real time environment. Uh, scene editing in object mode. Uh, so in heavy scenes, new features in Blender 2.8x make most operations over data blocks more pro problematic in the 2.7x era. Goal is to bring those operations back to a constant or logarithmic complexity. Uh, another one that's came that this is one of the things we've lost from Blender 2.79 through to Blender 2.8 is the high performance. Um, so get back 2.7x performance levels for mesh editing. Uh, so definitely nice thing to see there. Uh, Lembic or USD, um, that's the universal scene descriptor, I believe is what that stands for. I might be making that up. That's Pixel's universal file format. More feature parity with other software. So basically going to add more and more features. In the last version of Blender, they had uh, limited import functionality, I believe was added, but uh, they're gonna be adding more support over time. Uh, asset manager basics, an asset in Blender can be models, meshes, armatures, materials, texture rigs, blah, 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 collections, and so on. Asset manager is about um, adding the ability to manage and browse data and a platform for anyone to extend and write their own managers. Um, and other projects, of course, include things like Vulkan, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, land PR, grease pencil improvements, custom key maps, uh, retopology improvements, compositors, sculpting improvements, texture painting cycles, EV improvements, and more. So that is the short-term look at the future of Blender, uh, you know, first off, the, the long term out to Blender 2025 in terms of the new changes with the LTS support and the version numbers. And then, of course, the new literal features that they are priorities for 2020. So there's a lot of nice stuff coming up in the future. Another thing then, is, let's finish this off on a bit of a bad note, is unfortunately, um, Ton Rosendale, the uh, founder of the Blender Foundation, uh, had or is currently actually on sick leave of sorts. Um, he's going to be fine, so that's a good thing. Let's not get all too worried about it. My health is going to be fine, but it impacts his work. Basically, he is living in a bubble right now, which is unfortunate. So last week, uh, Monday night, I was hospitalized. By the way, this is also a week out of date, so this was on March the 5th. Uh, I was hospitalized with an acute immune system failure. It was critical and severe, but quickly fixed up and diagnosed to be excellently treatable with common medicines. Problem is, he currently has no immune system. And, you know, given the world that we live in at this exact moment in time, I'm not going to use certain words because I don't want to get demonetized. But, yeah, he's got, he's in a special overpressurized area in a hospital uh, in Amsterdam right now. And he's going to be there for some time. Uh, so until April, he's basically uh, given all work and responsibility over to Francisco City. Sorry if I mangled your spelling or your pronunciation of your name, uh, but that means he's not going to be hitting any of these uh, conferences in the near-term future. Uh, but one of the ironies is probably since he published this, a lot of these conferences are getting canceled anyways because 
you know why. So anyways, a bit of bad news there. Had an immune system failure. Nice thing is they are treating it. He's just kind of out of commission for about a month. He also doesn't want you to contact him. Take this as, um, you know, his announcement. Can't handle thousands of good health mails or personal messages. He's not going to be able to get back to you. So if you want to, you know, shout out to Ton, do it on um, Twitter or something like that. And that's good enough. He, he knows you care. All right. So that is it for the news. Um, hopefully uh, you recover quickly and uh, best of luck there. And I got to say, again, I, I like the new numbering system. I like it's something that, again, I think Blender has always been a little weird about. So it's nice to see them conforming a bit, I guess, to, to societal norms. And I, I like the list of big projects that they're working towards. I think Blender has a very bright future. Uh, be interested to know what you're most excited with here. Another thing that I'm not going to get into because I don't want to get into the Flameworks thing, but I will link it in the linked article as well. There's also a discussion over at the Blender developer blog, which, by the way, are excellent, uh, a great place to check things out. Uh, they've also got a bit of a talk about the, the the UI for the future, and it's very speculative at this point, and reason why I didn't really go into it all that much, but they're talking about some of the things they want to change going forward, and there's a, there's a bit of contention. Now, UI changes are always the most contentious, but if you're interested in checking that out, I will link this as well. So if you want to see a little bit where they intend to go with things on the UI, I will link that with the linked articles down below. All right, so that is it. That's the future of Blender, uh, at least for the, the short term and, uh, you know, in a more high-level sense for the next five years. Let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.